very soon or hoping to if they can get their places sorted out. I think of good things, happy memories, so making new friends. Yeah, that's right. And it is actually the University of Gloucester, my old university, uh, that wants to ban this phrase. It says the term conjures up negative images of wild partying and drinking. Uh, and so they've banned it. Not sure I instead... see those as negative images. Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> this week, they want to call it Welcome 2020. So... We are asking, are we becoming too offended by certain words and phrases? For instance, some sports commentators have reportedly been told to avoid the term nitty-gritty because of its origins in the slave trade. I didn't know it was that. I thought it was something to do with nits in your hair and getting down to the little detail of That's things. What I thought, yeah. Nits and grits. Hmm. OK, sorry, you carry on, Alan. In cricket, the term batter is considered to be more gender-neutral than using batsman. The Scrabble Players Association in America have banned the word wrinklies for being offensive to the elderly. Uh, some estate agents believe the term master bedroom is sexist, uh, so they refer to it as the primary bedroom. I also thought that could have some uh, kind of slave connotations as well. Uh, really? Slave masters, yeah, I was reading oh. up yesterday. And the government's cyber experts banned the term blacklist over its racist connotations. Goodness me. Well, joining us now is Bobby Seagull, the author and teacher who thinks we're being too offended by words, and Daryl Morris, a presenter on talk radio, who says language is always evolving, so there's no harm in losing words which cause is offence. I think mm. this is changing all the time. Um, you know, just quickly before we go to the guys. OK. When I was a kid growing up, yeah. I used to refer to myself as half-caste. Did you? That was what I was taught. Yeah. Um, lots of other mixed race and people it, your used the term. Used it. My parents yeah. used the term. It was, you know, socially acceptable. But as I got older, you know, it kind of started to jar. So I used the term mixed race, uh, right. which isn't even up to date because now you're supposed to use the word dual heritage. I think when it's things like that, it's quite, uh, for want of a better term, black and white. You know, perhaps we shouldn't be saying those terms. But then things like Freshers' Week. I mean, to me, I suppose sounds... the question is, where do you draw the line, yeah. isn't it? So, look, let's talk to Bobby first of all. Um, we all, nobody wants to cause offence, really. Um, uh, we want, we want to say the right thing, but there comes a moment where we feel like um, some people feel like their language is being hijacked by political correctness, and we can no longer almost express ourselves. What do you make of banning Freshers' Week? Or the term. Uh, so, Kate, the way I think about it is the question we should be asking is where should we focus our energies on? Should it be on tackling banning words or looking at the underlying cause in which the words cause offence? And again, let me just make it clear. There's a clear red line for me that there are certain words that are beyond the pale, like racial slurs that are meant to demean uh, or egregiously offensive words for certain communities. But the way I see it is, if you want to cut down a tree, let's say the tree here is that there are young people going to university that feel as if, oh, I, I'm really scared of Freshers' Week. It's all about drunken and debauchery. debauchery. Um, the key thing is you're trying to cut down the branches, not the twigs. By changing the word, such as Freshers, and calling it welcome, what you're doing is going after the twigs. And fine, you keep pulling down twigs. Eventually, you might get down the tree. But the key thing is to go after the branches. Why are people afraid of freshers? What are the traditions that we need to tackle to make right. more people feel welcomed within universities? Get to the core. Uh, let's ask Daryl about that. Daryl, the thing is, is for some people, getting to the core is looking at language because it's people's ignorance of terms and how offensive they can be and what they do to others um, which means that language becomes offensive. There's terms that we would never use now because we're aware of how offensive it caused, which my parents and grandparents probably didn't realise were, you know? So I guess, that in a way, language and finding the detail of it and looking at the detail is important. It is, but, but language evolves, it changes, and, and it's right for us to constantly take a second look at, at language that we use and ask ourselves some questions, searching questions about what that word means in the modern day and the consequences that it has. There are a million words. I mean, there's a couple of them that you've, you've outlined there. There are a million words that I found in the research for this morning that I could have said on this television program, on ITV in the morning a couple of decades ago that I, I can't say now because as a society, we have 
um, recognised that they mean something else. Freshers is a really great example of this, actually, in as much as I don't think anybody's going to be hugely offended by the word freshers, but this university have decided not to use the word freshers because they don't want their welcome week to be about boozing and partying and close contact because there's a viral pandemic uh, happening at the moment. So it's a really great example of um, of when a word takes on a different meaning and, and we have a, a shared understanding of what that word actually means. So it's perfectly the reasonable is, for them though, to say... Will it actually change the behaviour? Because, you know, just calling it something different doesn't stop youngsters away from home, often for the first time, wanting to mix, wanting to party, maybe an experience with alcohol, maybe having too much of it. It doesn't actually change it, does it? Uh, and this, I think one of the things that we have learnt um, uh, uh, most starkly in this pandemic here is that um, is that language really matters. Ask the Prime Minister, ask the Prime Minister's scientific advisors. They've been very careful with their words and their choice of words have either really helped and have kept the public on track and have kept us on the straight and narrow or they have been the untying of some previously very important uh, messaging. So uh, without question, I think, I think we cannot underestimate actually just how powerful words can be and how much they matter. And I think in this context, and it'll move us on to the conversation about words that are offensive or make people feel excluded. You know, if, if, we, if we see just how important a word is in this context, it is even more important when it comes to making marginalised communities feel more marginalised. Daryl, what words do you find offensive? Oh, can I say them on breakfast? I had a call. Somebody called me before the show this morning and said, do not say something that is going to get you and us in trouble. <laughs> so I'm not maybe not I'm offensive not gonna, not don't, there. Don't go towards offence. Okay, let's maybe not do offensive Tell us, let, let's yeah. maybe, okay. let, let's say, what, what do you find annoying? What words would you like to see banned? We've already had some people say they hate the overuse of the word basically. Uh, Dr. Hillary hates the overuse of the word awesome. What, what words would you like to see scrapped? Um, yeah, awesome and basically are two prime examples, aren't they, of words that, uh, that are massively overused and have taken over and have probably been dumbed down, actually, from their original, uh, their original meaning. Um, Alex, you made a really great point, actually, at the start of this, that you used to use a term there to describe yourself that, that um, is now no longer socially acceptable. And I used to band around the word um, gay relentlessly when I was a kid, when I was a, a, a youngster and, a, and in my early teens, because it was acceptable, you know, particularly where I grew up in Bolton, you would call people gay as a derogatory term all the time. And that's obviously not who I am now. And we've made progress. And in the last couple of decades since that time, we have, we have come to realise that that word has connotations that using it as a derogatory term isn't acceptable. And that's progress. That's change. That's that's exactly what we should be striving for. Of course. Um, we'll ask uh, we'll ask Daryl what, what he thinks about... We'll ask Bobby, I mean, what, what he thinks he'd like to see banned in a moment. But you've been getting touched too. Tracy says, I hate the phrase, my bad. Actually, that is a bit annoying. Yeah. Cathy says, I don't like the word lush. That should, we should get rid of that. We I use that the all the lush. time in Bristol. Gert lush. Gert lush. Gert lush. Definitely Actually, it sounds that. lovely the way you say it. <laughs> uh, other people say, I really hate the phrase at the end of the day. That's Linda. Several people don't like that. <laughs> and Martin says, I hate people which start sentences with the word so. I do that all the time. Yeah. Oh, so. Although I do Bobby. say, Linda on Twitter says, yeah. I really hate at the end of the day. I, I, I do say that quite a bit. It's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? So, Bobby, quickly then, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, what would you like to see scrapped? So, rather than words, so at the end of the day, Kate, I think... <laughs> I think actually focusing our energies on finding what words to ban, what causes offence, I think actually actively harms the causes we're trying to defend for a couple of reasons. One is, I think as a public, we have a limited bandwidth on things that we can take. Again, we've got our daily lives to worry about, our mortgage bills, educating our kids. And when we're arguing about tiny, weeny details about is it fresh, is it welcome, that distracts us from the key issues. I think the second thing, Kate, is, is that it gives us a false sense of achievement. So imagine you're a university chancellor, and again, this is just one example, and they've banned the term freshers. They can sit there going, oh, yes, I've done my bit. They'll tell the, the board, they'll tell the directors, yes, we've got rid of the word freshers, so university students are going to have a better experience. But they actually... The culture is still ingrained. People are still expecting to go to university at 18 to drink and do all the sort of excessive parts of culture. So I think the key thing is it, I think this can actively harm rather than support the causes we're looking to uh, bolster up. Wise words, but our producer's saying too many words. We're way over time. Bobby and Daryl, good to chat to both of you this morning.
Well, the thing is, is that, you know, Freshers' Week is going to look completely different anyway because there won't be the nightclubs open, the drinking won't happen. Social so, distancing, actually, welcome 2020 actually, might, it might be more take appropriate. care of itself. Andy is always welcome. He's here at 9 o'clock for Lorraine. Uh, morning, Andy. Morning to you both. At the end of the day, Lorraine is a lush show to watch. Isn't it, though? Isn't it just...